Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing a tutorial over a really cute hoodie. So this is going to be perfect for like fall, winter, um, even early spring. But this is a really cute pattern. Um, this is called the Seaside Hoodie from Lowland Kids um, Patterns. And we will link them down below as always. This is a really, really cute pattern. It features a little bit of binding on the hood. Um, but other than that, we're not going to do it with pockets. I believe this pattern comes in sizes, I believe, newborn up to 10, 10, 12 maybe. Not really sure on that, but um, it's a really great pattern. It really is. I tried it yesterday. Um, one of the people asked for me to cover this pattern. So I tried it yesterday and um, loved it. It's super cute. So I'm going to be using French Terry fabric. Um, make sure that if you're using French Terry, that you're making it for your own child or if you're gifting it or selling it, make sure that if you're using French Terry that it is a compliant French Terry, which means that the person you bought it from did the specific testing to make sure that it meets the um, requirements for safety. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, like I said, it's not that big of a deal if you are just doing this personal use, but if you are making garments to sell or even just to gift, Compliance is really important. So I'll link a group down below that can give you a whole bunch of good information on compliance and making sure that your business is legal and you're doing things the right, safe way for your um, customers. So, all right, let's get to what you need for this pattern. Like I said, they do have an optional pocket. We're not doing that. Um, you'll need the back. It's cut on a fold here. It's a little crazy looking piece, but it's super cute once you get done. It's actually really easy. Don't let it intimidate you with the crazy pieces. All right, so next you need the hood. You're gonna cut two sides, mirrored images. Opposites also means mirror images. <laughs> Opposites also means mirror image, mirrored. Good Lord. <laughs> Opposites also means mirrored images. So basically what you've seen me do before, I fold the fabric like I'm going to cut on the fold, but then I just place the piece, make sure there's fabric on all sides. Um, folded and then you just cut around the piece to make two mirrored images other like otherwise you'd put one down like this with the writing face up and then you would flip it over and cut another one out like this if you're doing it on a single piece of fabric and not folded it so that's how you do mirrored images or opposites as this pattern piece calls you will need the cuff you need to cut two of these the exact same way this one really doesn't matter being opposite in, or opposite because it's a square. It doesn't really matter. You just need two of these pieces. There's no fold. You need one waistband, which will be cut on the fold here. Make sure you're paying attention to the grain line, which is um, denoted by an arrow on here. So that's where the not, it's not going to be stretching going this way, but it is going to be stretching going this way. So if they show you the grain line, you know that the stretch is the opposite, and that's where your stretch of your fabric needs to be laying when you cut this piece out. So this is the front, and this is a fold here. And then last but not least, the sleeve, and you will cut two mirrored images or opposites of this as well. So like I said, fold your fabric over, put this piece down, cut all around it, and you'll get two pieces that are mirrored images. Otherwise, if you wanna cut on a single fold to save a little bit of fabric, you could cut one like this, and then flip it over like this, and cut on a single piece of fabric. So that's how you do that. So I've got everything cut out here, so let's see what I've got done. Hopefully that stays. Also, don't mind my mess back here. My mannequin. Isn't she cute? It's, it's a work in progress. Don't pay attention to that. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to grab this back piece here, which I've already got cut out. It was cut on a fold. This is what the back piece looks like. All right, so then what you're going to do, oh, I almost forgot. You need a binding piece as well. There is a chart in the pattern so whatever size you're using i'm using the 3t um today so it'll fit my daughter but um the pick your size according to the measurements that's one thing that um a lot of people have issues with make sure you're paying attention to the measurements included in the size chart per pattern designer all pattern designers have a different sizing block that they use specific to their brand just like you will go to old navy and you fit one pair of jeans, but you go to like Target and you fit a different size jeans. Same thing. Um, so make sure you're paying attention to the measurements because most, I mean, pretty much all of them are very true to size because they go through testers after testers, making sure that the sizes fit those specific sizes that they put in the size chart. So that will require a little bit of blending, which is the best part about hand making clothes is you can do like 
if for say your child is taller but fits a smaller size but needs more length you can add more length to the pattern so just make sure you're paying attention to that because i see that that's a common issue that most people have is they'll make a size and they'll be like this doesn't fit or the sizing is off well no most of the time what likely happened is that no that does happen don't get me wrong but what likely happened is you didn't make it per your child's size um, measurements per the size chart. So when you actually look at the size chart, you realize that you didn't make the right size for your child. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Like I said, it is possible that some size charts will be off, but majority of the ones that I share here, that we share, they're going to be pretty spot on because I've tried them. And um, But that's with lowland kids, I do typically size up one than what my child regularly wears because she fits in the measurements for the size up. So make sure you're paying attention to that, just a disclaimer. But the binding piece, back to what I was saying, the binding piece is actually included in the size chart. You go look, I think it's, I can't remember where it is, but you have to look for the binding piece. And there is two different ways you can do the binding. You can do the binding, they show you in the instructions how to do the binding with um, leaving it open but then it leaves a seam at the top. I don't like that. So I like to do the binding in the round, which is a different measurement and it shows you that too. So we're doing, or I'm doing, the binding in the round. So mine was a one and a quarter inch wide by 19.75 inches long. But I did this pattern yesterday, like I said, and I found that the, um, the way I like to apply my binding, I needed to make my binding strip wider. So I made mine two inches by 19.75. Um, That's what I did. So this is two inches instead of the one and a quarter inch. I just do that because, like I said, the way I apply the binding, um, the way that I have learned, not necessarily I've learned, the way that I find it the easiest to apply binding, I made that binding strip thicker. So let's get started. This is the back piece. And then here is the front piece, which is this beautiful, like, amber, um, this is called leopard print, Bailey. <laughs> lost my marbles there for a moment. Okay, so this is the front piece, and this is kind of like, it's a, this is my first time trying color blocking, not trying color blocking, but this, I'm, I'm super excited about how this is going to turn out. I've not done this, um, particular pattern design yet, so this is going to be exciting. So I'm going to put this down like this match this one up and if you can see here there's a tiny piece of the mauve it's about a, a quarter inch sticking out that's supposed to be there so don't freak out when you put this down just make sure the bottoms match up and this part matches up and you will have a like a triangle piece sticking up here and you'll have it over here as well but pretty much you're going to serge or zigzag stitch right here and then once you get that done you will then pull this part over to here which this will be all bunched up and under here you pull this part over here and it'll be done. So I'm gonna go serge there, just like I said, and I'll be right back, okay? All right, so then this is what it looks like. And just in case I wasn't clear earlier, you are putting these right sides together, of course, and then you know doing your seam on the inside so that it's on the inside of the garment. All right, so I did the serge here like this. I did that, and then once that was done, I pulled it over here to do this one like this, and then now. This is how it looks. All right. And so this is the front. This is the back. All right. So what we're going to do now is prepare all of our pieces here. So for the, this is the waistband. We're going to prepare it just like a normal cuff with the um, ham hot method. So this is the ham. I've already folded it this way. And then I'm going to fold it hot dog this way. And then all of these edges right here that are raw are going to be serge or zigzag stitch, like I said. Anytime you see me using my serger, you can absolutely do it on a sewing machine with a zigzag or an overcast stitch if your machine has that. But a zigzag stitch works just perfectly. Just make sure you turn your um, the width of the zigzag down just a little bit so that your threads don't pull. That's some good um, advice there. <laughs> all right, so then your cuffs here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you remember which way your stretch is going. So my stretch is going this way, which means my first fold, my first hamburger fold is gonna be this way. And then I'm gonna fold it hot dog this way. 
and then that is where I'm going to surge. Same thing here, this is my stretch. So I have the first fold is across the stretch. The second fold is this way now, which is across the grain line. So then these edges I will surge or zigzag stitch. And then lastly, the, or not lastly, of uh, this fabric, it's lastly. Um, I'm not going to prepare this like a cuff, the binding strip. I'm just going to fold it once hamburger and then surge or zigzag stitch these raw edges together because you want to keep it open so that when you add it to the hood, it's going to be able to fold over everywhere. So don't fold this one like a cuff, just one fold. All right, and then the sleeves, we can go ahead and get everything done pretty much prepared to, to add to here. So because we are adding the binding to the um, hood in the round, we can go ahead and just surge or zigzag stitch the curve, the whole curve edge of the two pieces put together, right sides together of the hood. Surge that entire curve there or zigzag stitch. Then with the sleeves here, we can go ahead and fold those over like this and surge here along this part, along the, um, basically this, this part of your arm. Surge that part and then the same thing with this one. Surge that part. All right, so we can go ahead and go over to the serger and get started. I'm gonna get everything folded up here. It'll be easy to go ahead and transfer over here to the table. And then I'll just go ahead and bring everything and we'll do everything else from the table and come back when we're done. Here's my serger, it's a Brother 1034D. Um, okay, so here's the binding strip. And like I said, we've only folded it once hamburger style. And I'm gonna go ahead and just serge the edge here. I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance is what I typically use for everything. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and quarter up my binding piece to make this a lot simpler in the end. And so I just, um, with this seam here, I snip here and here to make equal points, sorry, here and here to make equal points. So here's the seam, there's the seam, and then I match those two points that I just snipped up with the seam that I sewed. And then I go to this side and snip these two points. And then I go to this side and snip these two points. And this is just gonna help me quarter up this binding strip. So when I'm adding it to the hood, it's gonna be a lot simpler to um, not have like wonky fabric or leftover fabric in areas. It'll be easier to stretch. So here is the cuff. Again, I have folded this already, and I'm going to stick the folded edge in first. Same thing again with this cuff. Make sure everything's still lined up because I didn't pin these, so i got to make sure they're all still lining up. cut your tails too short okay so then I'm going to quarter or not necessarily quarter I'm going to mark my points so that'll be easier to add these to the sleeve so those this is the side seam and then I snip these two points here same thing here this side and this side and so when I flip this cuff out there's my cuff I have two points here and I'm going to use this seam as a reference here and so then I'll just be able to put that cuff in the sleeve no problem. Fold this one out too. All right, so my cuffs are done. My binding piece is prepared. Now let's go to the waistband. Same thing, this edge here. I pinned this one, so should be together still. Folded edge in first. Prepare this one just like we did the binding strip, but this one's folded like a cuff. So um, this is the seam that we just sewed here. So then this side, you're gonna snip these two points. Boom and boom, that was a big snip. <laughs> and then take your pin out if you put a pin in there. Fold this thing out like a cuff. Try to match up all your raw edges and match up those two snip points that you just snipped. And then match those up to the back seam 
or to the seam that you sewed, which will go in the back. <laughs> and then you will find this equal point on this side. And then you will do the same for the other side. And then this just makes it easier to add the cuff to the bottom of the garment, which we will quarter up in just a moment as well to make sure that we have the equal points. That's the waistband. All right, next looks like a sleeve here on my list. And so, like I said, we are sewing this part of the sleeve. Don't pay attention to the fuzzies. I'm going to get a lint roller. It's the, the French Terry kind of um, gets everywhere. So, so down here. So then here is the sleeve with the armpit. Well, that, that's technically the armpit. <laughs> and that's the bottom of the sleeve. We'll add cuffs in just a moment before we do anything else. All right, the next sleeve is the exact same thing. Now remember, everything is folded right sides together. Not folded, but um, yeah, technically folded. <laughs> everything to be right sides together so that your seams will be on the inside of the garment so there's that and then let's go ahead and do the curve of this hoodie or this hood part here I'm gonna start here you just do a serge curve make sure all your edges are still lined up Right, so that's all of the pieces that we needed to prepare for this so what we're gonna go ahead and do I'm gonna go ahead and add the waistband so what I'm gonna do how to how I find my points so I'm gonna fold up this front part here uh, right sides together and I'm gonna match up this seam here so I know when I match up those two that this point right here that I'm holding is going to be one point that's gonna be straight in the middle so then I know if I pull these two um, tight here that this is gonna be directly in the back of the garment so now all I got to do is match those two points up that I just snipped with the front and the back. Make sure that you're paying attention. Um, then you'll find your equal side pieces. So this is going to be my side piece here. And then make sure your pieces are still lined up and then go over to the other side here. And that's going to be your other point. I like to put my seam for the cuff in the back. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. So for this part, you are going to need pins. So what I'm going to do, this is my um, garment, it's still inside out, or wrong side out. I'm going to grab my cuff here, like this. I'm going to find the back part here, which I am going to do it here. In the very back, I put my seam in the back, and I am putting it on the inside of the garment. My cuff's going to go on the inside, like this. So I'm just going to match up all my points here. Going around. All right, so then there is the cuff. And as you can see, you kind of have to pull the cuff just a little bit. See how this it's kind of gaping right there? You have to pull the cuff just a little bit to stretch and lay flat. All right, so I'm going to start right here. And I'm just going to put it down like this, take my pin out, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this next pin here straight. I'm going to make sure all my edges are still lined up. With French Terry, it does typically kind of tend to roll when you stretch it, so make sure you're paying attention to that, and then nothing's getting rolled under. Um, Make sure you're removing your pins as you get to the next one. And then that's what I do. I just go ahead and pull the next little section to my next pin and make sure everything's still lined up. And if you need to use more pins, if you're not comfortable just using four, do more. Um, but I like to do the base of four to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. Because then as you see, I kind of hold the middle in between where the pin, the first pin was and the second pin is, I kind of hold it with my fingers to kind of keep it together. All right, and our 
last little section here. Just make sure everything's still lining up. Yeah, we're good. Now I just go over where I started, and then if you need to turn your knife on when you or knife, sorry, if you need to turn your knife off when you're doing that um, to avoid cutting your already made um, seam here do that but if you don't um i don't because i'm i'm typically used to just you know kind of pulling it a little away from the knife just pay attention you can see your knife here if you look down and just make sure that this seam doesn't get cut by the knife it will lead a, a little bit when you first start but then kind of straighten it back up to where it's not getting cut See, that's what I mean by you don't want this part getting cut. So then you're going to use your nit picker here. You can get this from Waywalk. It's like 90 something, 90, maybe a dollar. I don't know. But it has this little hook on it. You open the hook, or it has a latch on it. This is the latch. Open the latch up. Put it into the fabric. Pop it out where the seam starts or this tail starts. Wrap the, the, wrap the tail around the... What's happening? Wrap the tail around the hook, close the latch, and pull it through. And then that is secured. You don't have to knot it. You don't have to do nothing like that. It is secured for life. All right. So then your cuff is now added on to your garment. So now let's go ahead and add the cuffs to our sleeves. So here's the end of the sleeve here. I need to make this point, um, which is the folded edge. So I need to snip there so that I can have a point of reference to pin my cuffs to same thing with the other sleeve all right so what i'm gonna do with the cuffs pretty much exactly what i just did with the band but we're just doing two points instead of four because it's a smaller area all right so what i like to do i like to make this seam these are the points that i snipped this is a seam i like to put the seams together so i'm going to put this is inside out here because you can see the seam Maybe there's a seam. So this is right side out. This is inside out. And I'm going to put the cuff into the sleeve like this. And I'm going to match up the seams and I'm going to nest my seams, which only means that if my cuff seam is going this way, I'm going to put my sleeve seam going this way. It makes that seam a lot less bulky. And so instead of pinning, I'm going to go ahead and just put this this point right here um, underneath my serger knife and I like to sew these in the round so I like to put um, with the cuff facing me I guess that's how you explain that <laughs> I like to put um, I like to go around the circle here as you can see I'm not doing the outside I find that a lot um, harder to do when you're doing a smaller thing so I like to do the inside all right, so then you just kind of pull it the same way you did the waist. You'll have to pull it just slightly. Make sure you're moving your pins and paying attention to make sure that nothing's getting stuck underneath the serger that doesn't need to be. Like your finger. <laughs> same thing, go over where you started. Snip it. Tuck your tail. Open the latch of this. Stick it in there pop it out where the tail is wrap it around the hook close the latch pull it through and it's secured all right so then we have a cuff here now that's added to the garment i'll pop it out here so you can see i'm gonna do the other one really quickly so that's the cuff onto the garment so we're gonna do this one really quickly exact same thing grab your cuff put it in here Match your seams up, nest your seam. Just make sure one seam is going one way and one seam is going the other. Grab your pins. I just use one in this instance. You can use two. Um, I've just, it's just easier for me to use one. You can use four. You can use, I don't care how many pins you use. If you need to use pins, use pins. No shame. Do what gets it done. All right, go around the circle. And all the while, you're just making sure that all your raw edges are still lined up. So you got two raw edges from your cuff and one raw edge from your actual opening of the sleeve. So just make sure that they're all still lined up.
Wrap it around, pull it through. So the tail is secured. So we have our sleeve secured. All right, so now what you're gonna do, you're gonna, okay, let's go ahead and turn this so you can see me. <laughs> you are gonna flip your body, the main part of your um, hoodie out. So this is what it's gonna look like here. This is the front, of course. I color blocked it with the leopard print. This is the front. And what I like to do now is add the sleeves. So what you're gonna need to do, you're gonna flip your sleeves right side out as well. So flip these right side out. So that means all the seams are gonna be inside here. And then the same thing with this one. And then once we get the sleeves attached, all that's left is the hood and the binding. So that's really cool. So sleeve. All right, so what you're gonna need to pay attention to, I'm gonna go ahead and try to put this on me like this so you can see better. Maybe, maybe. That works. All right, so clearly this is the front, this is the back. You'll need to pay attention to your sleeves because they are a little different depending on um, which is which. So you'll pull them like this and you need to know that this is the back and this is the front. So let's go ahead and see, make sure that that's correct. All right, I believe that is correct. So what you are going to do now, first you need to make sure that you have this little V part here, the sleeve, which is right here. I like to go ahead and snip it just to make sure that that's my V point because that's where you're gonna be adding the sleeve here. Typically, you'd have a seam there, like a side seam, but since this has a color block for the front, this is actually the side, and there's not a seam there, because the, the seams are right here. So, what you're gonna do is make sure that when you lay it down, that the, this part is going to be the top. See how this part of the sleeve sticks out? That's gonna be the top. So what you're gonna do is you are gonna go ahead and Pin the armpit of the sleeve here, which is this part, the seam, to this, to that little snip that you just made. All right, and then you're gonna match up the back part with the back part of your sleeve here. Match that part up, and then go around and match the front up with the front part of the sleeve. So what I just like to do, I don't pin it, but if you needed to pin, I'd do three pins and I'd pin this part here, and then I'd pin the armpit, and then I'd pin the top of the back of the sleeve. So all I'm gonna do now, so this is the front of the sleeve, and there's little points that you met, goodness, I got hiccups, that you match up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that underneath my knife here, like this. Make sure nothing's folded, that sleeve's kind of folding on me. All right, and then I'm gonna hold the armpit here of the sleeve, making sure all my pieces are out of the way and I'm just doing the raw edges here. I have my sleeve. All right, and then I'm gonna pull my fabric here to the back of the sleeve. Pull your pin out where the armpit is. And then you will just keep stretching the sleeve to match up with the back here. All right, just make sure your end points are matching up. I'm gonna go ahead and just snip my tails here. Okay, so then what it looks like when you're done, the sleeve is on there now. Um, so there's the sleeve on the actual hoodie. There's the sleeve. So let's go ahead and do the other side. And so here's the armpit. It's facing me. Right side's facing me. Hopefully you guys can see. Right side's facing me. So I'm going to grab my sleeve here, which we know this one's correct because the other one was correct for the other one. So you grab a pin, put your armpit seam here of your sleeve to that snipped point that we made in the, like, the armpit. Pin it and then match up this part of the sleeve here 
Make sure your points match up. Like I said, you can pin if you need to. Um. All right, keep on going. Make sure everything's still lined up. And then move your pins as you go. Make sure you're still pulling what you need to be pulling, which is the back part of your hoodie and the sleeve, the back part of the sleeve. Just make sure you're matching it all up. Everything is still matching up where it needs to match up. All your raw edges are still together and not shifting because it is, it is easy to shift, especially if you're pulling it just a little bit. Right, sleeves are on there. So this is what they look like with the sleeves. Turn it this way so you guys can see. So sleeves are now on here. Sleeves. All right, so we got that part done. Next, we're going to add the hoodie part. But before we do that, we need to quarter up, or I like to quarter up, the um, neck. <laughs> it's called a neck. So I'm gonna fold it to where the seams of the back here are here so this is what I'm holding here is going to be the mid back that's where my tag is going to go and that is where the back is going to go the back seam of this hood is going to go as well all right so now I'm going to fold I'm going to fold on that snipped point that I just made and that will give me my front middle piece in the very front I help you with the binding is this front piece but the, these two side pieces um the back piece is going to help you with the hood um so that was just an extra step that you don't necessarily have to do. I just like to do it. I quarter up pretty much everything. Even if it's not necessary, I'm quartering it just in case. <laughs> All right. So what you're going to do now is you're going to put this down. This is going to be the back. Hopefully you guys can see. All right. So here's the back of the hood or the, the hoodie. So I'm going to put the hood. I'm going to open it up like this. Of course. Things in the way. All right, so I'm going to put the hood. I'm going to open up the hood like this, so that the middle is the seam, and I'm going to put the seam on the very back point that I snipped here, and I'm going to pin it right there, and then I'm going to go around, and then this point. That front point that we did has a, a peak here and a peak here before it swoops down. So this peak and this peak is where this hood is going to stop. So right there, I'm going to pin there just to help me get a good guide. And so the, on the other side, the exact same thing. Follow it around the neck to the front. This is the side of the hood here. And you're going to go to this other peak on this side. So that you have that much of an opening where the hood... Ooh, Lord. You have that much of an opening <laughs> where your peaks are. So as you can see, there's a peak here. It swoops down and there's a peak here. So that's where your hood's stopping. And then the binding will go around it. So what I like to do is now surge it on the inside. And I like to add my tag in the middle back. So I'm going to remove this first pin here. And the way I pinned it, you're going to have to pay attention to your pins and make sure you're feeling them when you go under here because um, they are on the other side. So go ahead and start around. All right. Make sure everything's still lining up. All right. So here's my middle back, which is the hoodie seam. And that's where I'm going to add my tag here. So I fold my tag like this, fold fabric like this, and then I put the tag on the middle back. And once it's surged, I let it go. I'm going around. To the next point, I'm going to remove my pin so I don't forget it. All right, and then you're going to 
snip here. And the last part we have to do is the binding. And it's really not as hard as you think it is. So, all right. So then here is the hood now. This is how this part looks. Let's see. So this is how the hoodie looks now. Sleeves, everything's done except for the binding of the hood here. There's a swoop here. And so now what we're gonna do is quarter up the um, hood here. So for our binding piece, we've already quartered our binding piece. So I've already made the snip in the very big front here. I've, and then this is a seam, so you don't gotta worry about that. What you wanna do is go ahead and match those points up, the seam in the middle, and then find your side piece of your hood here and then the side piece of this side of the hood which is here and then we're going to add the binding strip all right so we've already quartered this up I like to put my seam right here all right so what you're going to do this is the inside where is that okay this is the I'm gonna apply the binding strip to the inside of the fabric so I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna put the right side of my binding onto the wrong side of my fabric here. And I am gonna nest my seam again there. And I'm just gonna serge this on. Um, that's why I widened the neckband because I like to serge my binding pieces on. I find it gets a better finish. I don't have a cover stitch um, and I don't have a binding attachment, of course, because I don't have a cover stitch. But um, if you have a cover stitch, you can use a binding attachment and it'd be much simpler. Uh, I say that. I've never used it, but it looks a lot simpler. <laughs> so when you're going around the inside of the hoodie here, remember the Binding strip is now right side down to the wrong side of the garment. So it's going to look a little weird. You're going you're gonna to think it's not going to make sense, but it does. You'll see. All right. Just make sure you're matching it up. Did I even snip that right? Where is that? It's hiding from me. All right. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to surge this on here. So you will have to pull your binding strip a little tighter. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this strip here, making sure that all the pieces are lined up. You will have to pull the binding strip to make sure that it lays flat with the um, opening of the hoodie of the hood. All right. So once you get it going, that's when you can start pulling a little bit. Please stop. Gotta be. It's gonna require more pulling than I thought. All right. My fabric is not that stretchy. I probably should have cut it a little bit uh, longer. But it will be okay. We'll get the job done. All right. So make sure you're pulling. The binding strip to lay flat onto the opening here of the hood. And I'm just sewing in the circle here of the hood. And then make sure you're removing your pins as you go. So here's the pin. Go to my next point here. Stretch it a little bit. Make sure everything's still lined up. Make sure there's no wrinkles. Next point. And on my last point here. And then we will do the um, top, top stitching of the binding down with the sewing machine. And we'll be done. And then we'll go over where we started. And I am going to use my knit picker for the last time of this garment. Pop it out. Pull it through. 
eye. And so this is what it's going to look like now. See, we, the reason we did it like that is because now when you flip it up, fold it, flip it over, you now have the binding on both sides of the garment. So let's go over to the sewing machine. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this okay. I um, had to rig it up just a little bit, so it might be a little crooked. Sorry about that. Maybe that's better. Okay, so what you're going to do is now you have your binding strip attached. So I'm holding the garment like this. So this is the outside of the hood, the back of the hood. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip it up like this. So I'll flip up the hoodie like this with my seam in mine here. And if you need to use a lot of pins, go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my pins again. At least I'm going to grab one. And I'm going to pin this down. The top part will be a little bulky because that's where you started. Um, that's why you have a whole bunch of seams there. Alright, so then what you're going to do is you're going to just randomly pull it up, flip this down, then flip it down once more like this. And then we're just going to top stitch the binding strip to the garment. You're going to do that all the way around. So this might require a lot of pins. Um, totally up to you on how many pins you want to use. Um, but some people like to use clips. This would be a good, good idea for clips too on this part. Um, this just pretty much helps keep your binding together as you go around. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm not going to add too many pins um, here. So... I notice when I start adding a lot of pins, I start hurting myself. <laughs> I start getting poked with pins. So I'm gonna go ahead and start at the top here. And I'm just going to sew or sew right here, pretty much top stitching that edge down, the binding strip down. So I'm gonna put this right here, and right here. I'm gonna start up here at the top that I've already got folded. I like to use my hand wheel here to go ahead and make sure that my needle is in the position where I want it to be before I remove my pin. And then as I go around, I'm just going to fold manually like this around my strip here. Just making sure I'm hiding that serge seam. All right. And as you go around, you'll pull it a little bit, like I said, and fold it under. And then fold it over the serged edge here. And then you're just wanting to kind of make sure that the um, back side and the front side are matching up. So like when you feel, you want to make sure that your this part is over the back part. So that when you're top stitching, it's going through um, the front and the back. Alright, so as you go along, and I just recommend that you do this in like little strips, um, little um, sections. Don't just try to go all around really quickly because um, you might mess up. All right, just make sure everything's still good. We're on our last strip here, and this one should be pretty simple to just fold over the surged edge here. Back to where I started, and then you will just snip that piece here. And so that is what the binding now looks like on the inside of the hoodie, or that's the outside of the hoodie, but it's really cute. So let's go ahead and go over here and snip all these little pieces and see the finished product. Only thing I forgot to say is lengthen that top stitch um, when you're doing this top stitching around the binding strip. Lengthen that so that you give a little bit more stretch and that, oh, ooh, that whistled. A little bit more stretch on your hood. But this is how it looks. It's super cute. Super trendy. I got that the contrasting bi uh, binding strip on the hood. Super cute hoodie. 
I'm excited to try this on Everly because it's really cute. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions, always leave them down below. Make sure if you um, want to check this pattern out, it's in the description. Pop that open with the arrowhead on the right hand side, which is actually over here because it's my left, your right. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe if you are not subscribed and hit the notification bell just in case because we post videos randomly occasionally, but we post a video every Tuesday. So if you don't want to miss that, if you have a busy schedule, hit the notification bell and YouTube will remind you when we post a new video. So um, hope you guys like it and we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Bye.